Most of the world, including my own family, you know, generally believe that viruses are agents of destruction and disease. But me and in my research group, we view viruses as sandbox of tools to build the next generation of therapeutic techniques. Growing up, my father had a large animal veterinarian practice. Definitely instilled a, an interest and a love of science that you really only grew to take a deep dive into virus research, and then I was hooked forever. Once you understand how a virus works, you can also deconstruct it and rebuild it to perform anything you might want to achieve from editing your own genome to delivering a protein of interest that maybe your body isn't able to make. And so it opens up countless doors to develop novel therapeutics towards diseases that presently are untreatable. To say it was a unique experience to be a virologist in New York City during a pandemic would be a dramatic understatement. I would be on calls with the White House on a bi-weekly basis, informing them of agents that you know, worked or didn't work or showed promise, while also understanding what were the best ways to implement policies that would mitigate further disease and transmission. At NYU Langone, my research group had really a breakthrough in the discovery of the underlying causes of long COVID, which oddly enough required learning whether or not hamsters like Cocoa Krispies better than Cocoa Pebbles. It turns out that hamsters like Cocoa Krispies better than Cocoa Pebbles, which I think is a fair choice. And one of the things that was very unique to COVID was how it impacted the olfaction system or your ability to smell. So we use golden hamsters to do this kind of biology and research. And so one of the first things we needed to determine was whether or not hamsters, like humans, lost their sense of smell you know, early on during you know, an acute affection. We would simply test which of the three cereals hamsters happen to like best. The animals that were infected with SARS-CoV-2 never find the food at all. And once my research group had determined that, in fact, hamsters do lose their sense of smell very much like we do, that really then allowed us to take a deeper dive into the why you lose your sense of smell. The neurons that are responsible for smelling in general, because it takes so much of their energy and metabolism metabolism to be able to smell, the moment they're asked to fortify their defenses, they do so at the expense of all the biology involved in smell. And that's why you lose your smell very quickly. Smell is sacrificed in place of defense. And one of the things that my team discovered was very much like people, the impact that that virus infection has, the evidence of it lasts far longer than the virus actually exists in the body. And what we see is you know, permanent changes to the brain and to neuronal biology. That really does explain a lot of the attributes like brain fog that patients with long COVID report. Results due to that inflammation caused by the infection can have long-term impacts. The environment that NYU Langone Health provides really enables us to take risks and perform science that you know, have big risks, but also have the potential for big gains.